Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I decided to make another video. I have to admit, I'm hella nervous about making this content today. I think we all know why I'm nervous. Um, if you haven't heard anything about what JK Rowling has been saying for the last three years, I don't know where you've been, but uh, we're gonna talk about it today, a little bit. By this point in 2024, it is well known that JK Rowling is a TERF, trans exclusionary radical feminist, basically meaning she is a very outspoken feminist, she fights for women's rights, but she does not include trans women in that category of women that she's fighting for. That is the definition of TERF. I'm not here to say like, yes, she's definitely a TERF, no, she's definitely not. Honestly, I don't even really want to get into like opinions in this video, I kind of just want to talk about my experience um, over the last few years. <laughs> now my relationship with Harry Potter and the world of Harry Potter is not like the same as everyone else's. I didn't grow up reading the books. I read the first one when I was about the appropriate age to read it. My mom bought it for me. I really didn't like it and so I didn't read the rest of the books but I really fell in love with the movies in sort of middle school, early high school. I watched them on repeat like every day after school. My best friend at the time and I would come home from school, we would throw in a Harry Potter movie. I had a giant projector screen in my basement that was like the size of the wall. And we would, <laughs> and we would act out the scenes as they were playing on the wall in front of us. And sometimes we'd like kiss Draco because we were about the same size standing up there. And like, we were weird, okay? We were 13. It wasn't until the seventh Harry Potter movie was about to come out that I decided to pick up the books again. I read through one, two, three, and four, and then I was running out of time before the movie came out, so I skipped to seven, and I read book seven, and then I saw the movie, and I never read five or six. And I don't think I ever will at this point. Three and four are my favorites, as I said. Seven was really, really boring to me, although I did enjoy the movies. I guess I'm forgetting now, it was two movies. It was part one and two. But the Harry Potter books do not hold any sort of special place in my heart, while the Harry Potter brand does. I was obsessed for a long time with like Pottermore, learning what house I am, what Patronus I have. It's a Mastiff, by the way. Guess what house I'm in in the comments. It should be pretty obvious, and if it's not, you're stupid. <laughs> okay, now it's gonna be obvious. I like Harry Potter a lot, and I show it. Harry Potter merch is one of the easiest things to come across, and I like to wear merch for things I like. So I have a lot of Harry Potter clothing, jewelry, random stuff. This is a soup bowl, by the way. There's nothing in it right now. <laughs> I went and saw Cursed Child when it was on stage in Toronto. <sighs> and I have felt incredibly guilty about all of that for years. My guilt stems from a couple of places. There is the obvious one, which is just, I want to be a good person. I don't want to support people that have harmful views and that are hurting members of my community. Um, and when I say my community, I guess this is as good a time as any. I'm not trans, uh, but I am non-binary. I am gender queer. My pronouns are she, they. I don't know if I've ever come out and said that before on the internet. <laughs> it is in my bio, it's just she, they. Um, I am not a lady. <laughs> is this a coming out video? What the hell is going on right now? Anyways, I'm not going to say I'm a member of the trans community because I have not faced anything that genuine members of the trans community have. I've received like a fair share of discrimination and hate speech at work because my pronouns are on my name tag and I work in a real conservative town full of old people that are annoying. I can handle it, luckily. I, I don't care what people say to me, but I, I work with a non-binary child. <laughs> One of my staff members at my store is underage and uses they, them pronouns and has also received just awful comments from customers. So yeah, I guess I, I feel a little bit of a hatred for turfs and for 
transphobic people. But the point of the video is not to be like, oh my gosh, woe is me, I am a member of the trans community, because I'm not. Okay, back on track to the actual video, now that that part is done, okay? <laughs> In June 2020, JK Rowling released her first tweet that would label her a turf, but it was a tweet replying to the phrase people who menstruate with like a jokey like, there used to be a word for that, right? Woman, 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 you know. There was a lot of backlash to that tweet, of course, um, and her defensiveness about it and her follow-ups sort of just like cemented her in this we don't like her anymore category. To be fair, a lot of members of the trans community were deeply hurt and betrayed by her words. A lot of people felt that the Harry Potter community was a safe space for all queer people, and, and while it apparently is for most, it's not for trans people. And since 2020, JK Rowling and the Harry Potter fandom has essentially been blacklisted from from popular culture, but especially the bookstagram community. I started my bookstagram account in 2021, so it was already post the JK Rowling situation. Um, and I made sure to not include any of her work in my posts. There are a couple of slip ups because I have decor in my house that is Harry Potter themed, like this candle from Charmed Aroma, that would appear sometimes accidentally in the background of posts. And as I became more of a fixture in the bookstagram community, I guess, I met a lot more people that were very vocal about their uh, anti JK Rowling, anti Harry Potter feelings. I stopped wearing Harry Potter merch out in public, even though I literally wore this golden snitch necklace on my wedding day. Uh, I didn't post cool stuff I have, like this illustrated edition of Goblet of Fire, which is my favorite Harry Potter book. I just stopped openly supporting Harry Potter and JK Rowling, both online and offline, for fear of backlash. I archived old posts that had like the candle in it or other just random accidental Harry Potter stuff, like the necklace if I was wearing it in a picture. I archived that picture. I felt this extreme guilt in my core of like, I cannot like this thing because the internet is telling me not to. Woe is me, I know. <laughs> oh, this video is so uncomfortable to make because I don't want to come off like I'm just being like, oh my god, I can't believe I can't post about Harry Potter just because the trans community is affected. I don't want to come off like that at all because that is not what I'm trying to say right now. I feel like the anti-Harry Potter sentiment was sort of dying down up until the announcement of the video game Hogwarts Legacy, which I believe was announced in 2021 or 2022. People were mad. We thought we were done with Harry Potter, there was no new content coming out, and then how dare Warner Brothers release a video game. This one's a little personal to me, so I am a little like passionate about this topic because the anti-Hogwarts Legacy movement um, did actually directly impact my life. I'm not sure if I've discussed this before as well, but my husband Ryan is a video game developer. He has wanted to make video games since he was a very young child and has pursued this dream his whole life and is now very successful. I'm super proud of him. He's worked on a lot of amazing AAA games, um, but that being said, people don't really think about this too much. He doesn't get to pick what he works on. <laughs> So in 2022, he was working for a third party company that was contracted on to work on Hogwarts Legacy, sort of in the, the final stages of development of the game. Obviously we weren't allowed to talk about it, it was under NDA, but we were seeing all of the backlash online about the game coming out, and then here's Ryan actively building the game. In the months leading up to the release of the game, there was a whole lot of talk online about boycotting the game, um, like actively hating the developers of the game, talking about how like, like threats of violence towards people making the game. And we were not scared for safety, that, that was never a real threat, but terrified that people would boycott the game and it would fail, which would directly impact Ryan's livelihood. <laughs> And Ryan supports our household. I don't know if you guys know this either, but Ryan's making the money while I sit here and make my dumb videos. We had friends and family talking to us about how evil this game was and how evil the people making the game were, not knowing that he was working on it. And then when we were finally allowed to talk about how Ryan was working on this game, we still had friends coming to Ryan 
and saying just horrible things to him. And it was really unfair and it made me very sad. Ryan has worked his whole, I'm about to cry right now. Ryan has worked his whole life. He's worked so hard. He is so talented and so smart and he is working on games. And this should have been a moment for him to be proud of something that he has accomplished. This amazing AAA game that is about to be released and he is getting hate from his friends, from his family, from random people on Facebook, from high school that he doesn't know are messaging him, saying bad things to him. Am I crying right now? <laughs> Anyways, it was um, a turbulent time for us. <laughs> and again, all of that, all of these real deep feelings that I have were just laced with guilt. Because of course people are angry about the game. JK Rowling hurt people with her words. And if I didn't have this direct connection to the game, if I was still allowing myself to be heavily influenced by Twitter or X or whatever and, and the Bookstagram community, I would probably be hating on the game as well. Luckily for us, the game was a success. The bonuses that year were good. <laughs> It's still a tricky thing to navigate going forward. I think by the end of 2023 and now into 2024, I'm seeing a lot more positive posts about separating art from artists, which is something I agree with. I don't want to make a whole video right now about the conversation of can you separate art from the artist, but my, my blanket opinion is yes, you can. And I think that people are doing that a lot without realizing it or without putting too much thought into it. JK Rowling is a very easy person to hate. But there are a ton of authors out there with awful stances, worse than hers, that we still support. Like, I see people posting Ender's Game and stuff about Orson Scott Card all the time and those people are actively against JK Rowling and they just don't know or they don't care. Ultimately, the point of this video is that towards the end of 2023, I decided to actively make a lot of changes uh, emotionally, like how I feel about things. I spent a lot of my life, like most of my life, not being open about the things that I like because I, I was always afraid of being judged. I was always embarrassed to like be a nerd. I obviously, have accepted that about myself um, more than just recently. But even then, there are like aspects of my nerdiness that I was scared to talk about. But I don't know, 2024 is the year that I don't care anymore. You guys can't really see it, but my hair is half blue, half purple right now. I don't care about anything this year. <laughs> and I'm not trying to say that I don't care about what JK Rowling has done. And that I'm not saying that we should continue to support authors and artists and creators that are expressing hurtful and, and hateful opinions. That's not what we should be doing. I just think we need to be smart about it. I think we need to not be so quick to judge and cancel um, within our own community of Bookstagram. There are Bookstagrammers and, and just people in the world where Harry Potter is like the foundation of who they are. Harry Potter got them into reading. Harry Potter helped heal them from trauma. Harry Potter helped them come out as queer in many cases, and it's still a very special thing to them. I guess, I guess I'm lucky in a way where it's, it's not as core to me. It's not as like ingrained in my soul as it is to a lot of other people, but I still feel this horrible guilt when I barely like care about the Harry Potter books. <laughs> I think we need to cut our fellow bookstagrammers and book lovers some slack. Recently, I have been rediscovering my love of Harry Potter. I've put my little things back up on display. I considered briefly doing like a full reread of the series and I guess first time read of five and six, but I, that's not gonna happen. I have so much stuff to read. But I've been wearing my merch out in public again. I'm wearing the necklace that I wore for my wedding again <laughs> because Tearing down people that are part of our community, the book community, as a way of trying to support members of a different community, the trans community, is not the way to go. 
I would love to actually hear some opinions from trans members of the book community. Like I said, despite my gender identity, I don't identify as trans, so I'm not the authority on this topic. Um, and I'm, I'm not a voice for trans people in this situation. So I would love it if I could be in contact. I'm not looking to just like harass my trans friends with this topic. I would love if you are watching this and you identify as a member of the trans community, if you wanna reach out to me and have this conversation with me, that would be great. But I think the lesson of this video overall is that we should love the things we love without feeling ashamed. We need to be smart about it. As I said before, you need to make sure that what you are doing and what you are saying is not hurting other people. But there is always like a limit to that. Liking Harry Potter is not hurting other people. And that is just a fact. Openly supporting JK Rowling's views on trans people is hurting people. <laughs> At some point I wanna do like a whole deep dive into authors and like bookishly related people that uh, are, are pieces of garbage that we can talk about a bit more to educate you guys because I see y'all supporting some bad people and you just don't know. <laughs> but again, you can support their work and their books as much as you want. I think I'm done rambling because I don't really know like what else to say on this topic. I've said everything I've had to say that I had planned. I got a little emotional. I came out. Please let me know in the comments. If you have any opinions on this, if you wanna talk about it at all, I'm not here to argue about if JK Rowling is or is not a turf. That's not what this video is about. So let me know in the comments if you love Harry Potter. Let me know if you have anything to say. Let me know if you disagree with anything I said and you want to correct me on anything or like, I don't know, I, I'm very open to criticism and to being educated. So feel free to let me know in the comments if you have opposing thoughts to mine. I welcome them. Before I go, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell icon so you know when I upload new videos. I upload two days a week. I love you guys, genuinely. Goodbye.